Hello everybody, welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is the Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for our championship preview and predictions show for round 28 in association with, in association with Betfair and Football 365. I can see already I'm getting some connection problems, so please bear with us. That's literally just happened during the intro. Most annoying. Don't feel the need to mention it in the chat. It won't help anybody or anything, but hopefully that'll fix itself very, very soon. Um, so championship preview and predictions. Every game we're going to be covering round 28 in the championship. And we want to hear from you. So I'm just removing stuff in the background to try and get a little bit of um, a better quality picture there. But I think it's coming. Fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. Anyway, um, we need your predictions for each and every game in round 28. And behold, the Football 365 predictor. Head over to football365.com and you can go and join in and get your predictions over there. And we will give you the odds for each and every prediction we make over at our friends. Betfair.com as we go. Please gamble responsibly. But I'll say that more than once in the show. as. As you know, let's say a big thank you to the Donovans, the Donovan brothers um, supporting the show for the second season running in memory of their dad, uh, Dennis and brother Mike, both sorely missed and cheering on Mill from above. Thank you to the Donovans. We'll give you a meal. Um, there it is. Right. Um, let me know. You can see me, hear me loudly and clearly. Um, <laughs> hopefully uh, the clearly is sorting itself out. Now, let's say some hellos in the chat. Matty, you and... Uh, Dave, Lenny, Dave, Jake, TJ, Jimmy, uh, Ross, Damien, Ollie. This mu this intro music makes my week. You don't see me while it's playing, doing a stupid dance in the background. It's tremendous, isn't it, Ollie? Uh, we'll never get rid of it um, unless the copyright changes. Uh, John, welcome. Jake, Simon, Pecan, Jake, Hamza, uh, Calm, and Simon. Right, let's get into this. Uh, 12 games and touch wood. They're all going ahead as things stand. So um, hopefully we're going to get our first full week end in what feels like probably about six. I don't know if we had a full one. It's been at least one postponement for about the last six game weeks, haven't they? Even though we've started catching up. So game number one, please, guys, get your predictions in in the chat right now for Stoke versus Fulham. Stoke, draw or Fulham. Stoke, draw or Fulham, can anybody direct me to a pithy tweet about Fulham's goal scoring? Because I only saw about 20,000 of them. Um, we get it. Fulham score lots of goals. We get it. Um, and there's only so many different ways of saying Fulham are absolutely immense in front of goal. And it was another six against Birmingham in midweek. Seven, six, six in a row. But they go to Stoke. And they go to Michael O'Neill, where you wouldn't think they're going to bang in six, but they're still going to be hot favourites for this one. In fine form are our leaders, Fulham. How do you think it will go? Predictions in then, guys. Stoke, draw, Fulham. Stoke, draw, Fulham. Fill that chat with predictions. Let me give you your bloom numbers. Right. Uh, league position, Fulham by seven. Um, I've gone with XG difference today. We'll see how that works rather than XG predicted finish. Um, Fulham by six. Uh, form table, Fulham by six. Homes and away, Fulham by 20. Stoke are 21st in the um, home form table for the last eight games. Um, uh, goals four, um, Fulham by 12. Goals against, Fulham by three. But I should point out, in the goals against stakes, Fulham are second in that particular table. Stoke are fifth. So Stoke do have a good defence. So look, if Fulham go to Stoke and bang in another six, then nobody's got any hope, have they? For goodness sake. Right, last call for predictions. Fulham, Stoke, draw. Fulham, Stoke, draw. Let's see what you lot are saying. Where shall we start? <laughs> I, I suspect we'll get a couple of 6 twos. I did tweet out earlier with Betfair. I don't know if... I bet I bet it comes in because lots of people are back. It's 200 to 1 at the moment for another 6-2. Um, right, David. Nil-nil and a joker immediately. Stranger things have happened. Right, Fulham, 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 Stoke. Fulham, 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 a Stokeshire house. That would be very championship, wouldn't it? Uh, Stoke, Stoke, uh, sorry, Fulham, Stoke. A few jokers in this one. Uh, Fulham, Fulham, uh, two all draw. We've got some Fulham fans hedging their bets here. 
they don't like the fact everyone thinks they're going to win about 5-0. <laughs> uh, Stoke, Fulham, Fulham, away win. Uh, return to form of Fabio. Yeah, I was annoyed with that, Dave, because I, I called the last goal as a hat-trick in that Birmingham game before I realised, oh, hang on a minute, that's Robinson. Not um, Carvalho. Right, let's click through all of these. Um, Fulham are good at scoring tweet. There we go. For five, can't do it. For, yeah, right. Yeah, agreed. Boring, isn't it, um, TJ? But you're totally right. Um, let's keep on these. Fulham, Fulham. Yeah, hit the like. Fulham, Fulham. Away. Um, and yeah, hello to Jay. Um, look, I cannot see the Fulham machine season up, I have to say. I think Stoke will come closer than Reading and Bristol City and uh, Birmingham, i.e. they won't get completely battered. They'll be ready for it, but still, away, away win for me. I think they're going to I think they're going to shut them out as well, Fulham. We said we got the fifth and second best. Uh, in theory, Fulham have a better defence than Stoke in terms of the goals against, obviously, sets up in a different way. I've gone for a 2-0 uh, to Fulham in this one. Uh, Stoke nil, Fulham two. You can get a seventeen to two on that. And would you believe, since I did my homework this morning, that has drifted? Uh, maybe everyone's too busy betting on six two, aren't they, for that one to be a thing? But there you go. I've gone for a two nil to Fulham. Right, moving on. Let's talk about Bournemouth, and it is Bournemouth versus Hull. Get your predictions in, please. Bournemouth draw or Hull? Bournemouth draw. Or Hull. Now, this is an interesting one. If we can have a new manager bounce, can we have a new owner bounce? Possibly. And have Hull already had the new owner bounce when they beat Blackburn in midweek? Who knows? Um, in terms of Bournemouth, um, they're coming back at it um, uh, a little bit, aren't they, Bournemouth? And we've had two straight wins and two straight clean sheets for the Cherries. Um, obviously, in those past two games. Um, let me know your thoughts on this one. Are Bournemouth back? Will they get stung into action by this pot? Will Fulham pull them with them, is what we're saying. Or will will maybe Blackburn drop away? Is there someone coming, breathing down um, Bournemouth's neck in the shape of a QPR, West Brom, a Middlesbrough, or even a Blackburn reset? Who knows? Let me know your thoughts on this. Um, Bournemouth draw or Hull. Let me give you your Bloom numbers for this one. And as you can imagine, heavily in Bournemouth's favours. If you learn anything from these numbers, so be it. Um, league position, it's Bournemouth by 17. XG difference, Bournemouth by 14. Um, eight game form table, here you go. Hull by five. But remember, Hull is still tracking some of that crazy run of four wins and two draws back into that eight game sample. And we think that's over, don't we, um, for Hull. Um, homes and away is Bournemouth by 15. Uh, goals scored, Bournemouth by 19. Goals conceded, Bournemouth by 12. It's heavily the numbers. Apart from the eight-game form table, I dare say, I haven't checked, if I did the six-game form table, I think it would be Bournemouth as well rather than the eight. But uh, you tell me what's a more relevant number. Hey, uh, sometimes logic feels very irrelevant in the Championship anyway. So uh, predictions, guys, Bournemouth draw Hull. Bournemouth draw, Hull, of course, you'll need your joker if you call in Hull on this one. Uh, let's have a little looky, looky, looky. Uh, where am I starting with this one? Uh, Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Uh, our last visit to Bournemouth was a 6-1 thumping in the Premier League. And if we play last night, I could steal a point by Bournemouth for me. Uh, home, home, draw. Uh, Hull, says Dean Simon, Hull. <laughs> uh, please leave your bias at the door, everybody. Uh, home, home, Bournemouth, draw, draw. Uh, Cherries back to winning ways after their last minute loss. Um, yeah, if I got those numbers. Oh, yeah, beg, beg your pardon. Sorry. Yeah, it was two and away before Luton, wasn't it? My bad. Um, uh, Bournemouth, Hull, Bournemouth, draw, Desmond, draw. There you go. A few people are on the um, are on the new owner bounds. Bournemouth, 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 draw, Bournemouth. Let's click on all of these um there we go yeah apologies sorry multiple people pointing out yes um it was two straight wins and then the defeat against um Luton there would you believe I sized up mid championship table too big and it took the form table away um right let's dive in I am going to go with the new owner bounce lasting one game 
and one game only and um, Bournemouth maybe being dragged along a bit by Fulham. Who knows? Home. Um, I don't think it'll be a walkover. I've got Bournemouth by one and I've got Hull to score. So um, I'm going to go 2-1 to the Cherries in this one, he says, trying to find it. On the Football 365 predictor, 13 to 2, you will get on that one. Um, Bournemouth to Hull 1. As ever, please head over to the Football 365 predictor game. Sign up with your email address um, and get on that leaderboard. Get your predictions in and submit it. And of course, if you are going to have a go at 13 to 2, was it? Yeah, um, for a 2 1 there. Do please gamble responsibly. 18 plus only. Be gamble aware. Dot org, please only bet what you can afford. Right. Um, good luck with this one, is all I'll say. Uh, Blackburn versus Middlesbrough on Monday night. A tricky one to call. Get your predictions in the chat. Blackburn draw borough. Blackburn draw borough. The Tony Mowbray derby. Now, before you ask me in the chat, Ben Brereton Diaz is due to be away with Chile. But the date of arrival for the training camp is the 24th, which is the day of the game. And you would assume the Chileans will give them dispensation, wouldn't you, to let him arrive um, on the Tuesday night? I assume it will be a... I'm sure someone will happily um, get a private private plane for him um, to travel on his own. But we don't know yet. And uh, Mr Brereton Diaz may not be playing in this game. Annoyingly for Blackburn, if it was on Saturday or Sunday or Friday night even, he would be playing, but it's going to be on TV. In fact, we'll probably end up doing a watch along for this one. So looking forward to it. Um, get your predictions in. And Middlesbrough, of course, I think it's six wins in seven in the league and seven wins in eight in all competitions. So Borough are in pretty fine feckle, aren't they? Blackburn draw Borough. Blackburn draw or Borough, get your predictions in. Let's have a look and do some uh, clickery um, here on as many of these as we can. Right, here we go. Right, draw. Oh, the nil-nil cards out. In fact, that gives me my first chance to do that, which is always good fun. Um, where are we going next? Okay, so Borough, Borough, um, uh, Borough, Borough, draw, draw couple of nil-nils, a few draws in here. I don't expect, well, it's up to you, your predictions, but I'm going to go for goals in this one, I think. Um, Borough, Borough, Wilder Special, Borough, draw, Borough, Borough. Let's just click through. Hopefully, you'll see um, all of these coming through. A few draws, a few people using the nil-nil card. I am not going to use my draw card, and I'm not going to use my nil-nil card. I'm going to use my away card. Oh, that might be a controversial one. So I do need my joker to play that because what I'm going for is going to be a 10 to 1 shot. I'm going for Middlesbrough to win this one 2-1. Um, probably on the assumption Mr. Um, Chilean Sensation is not there. And also on the assumption that Burrow will probably score another late winner. Um, that's been the pattern recently. So I'm going to go for the Borough train to continue. That is a joker call, I have to say. It's a 10 to 1 shot. So uh, um, an outsider bet with Blackburn third and Borough six. But I am locking that one in on Football 365 for a 2-1 to Borough. Right, on we go for game number four. And it is Coventry versus QPR in the Roy Wegerly derby. Get your predictions in. Coventry draw QPR. Coventry draw or QPR for this one. Um, This one has the air that it could be a bit of fun, actually. Um, Both sides are in the top six for goals scored. Um, And both sides, obviously, QPR in fourth and Coventry in ninth in the top 10 in the league. Both sides also offer victory. QPR off three straight victories. Indeed, they're coping with AFCON well, QPR. And Matt Godden is coping with the championship well. He's in very good form, the Coventry striker. So don't all get your nil-nil cards out at once. But 
I fancy this might be quite an entertaining game. And I wonder if Coventry can get back to their good home form of earlier in the season when they were the um, far and away at the start of the season, the best home team in the league. They're now only the eighth best home team. They've lost three in five um, at home. Uh, let's give you your Bloom numbers here. Um, in the table, QPR by five. XG difference, Coventry by six. We know QPR play the penalty box as well, don't we? Um, eight game form table, QPR by nine. Homes and aways, um, this is last eight. Uh, QPR by 11. Interesting. Uh, goals for QPR by two. Goals against Coventry by four. So, uh, Ken Coventry's slightly superior defence shut out uh, a decent QPR attack. It all has um, even written all over it. And to me, it has goals written all over it. So, feel free to get your nil-nil cards out. Coventry draw, QPR, Coventry draw, or QPR in this one. Uh, let's click through some of these um, predictions. Where shall we start? Let's start here with um, David. Uh, Rangers, 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 Rangers. Uh, two wins in a row, um, says Callum. Are you including a cup win in that, I assume? Um, he's gone 2 1. Kov, uh, Kov. Um, we passed that game, aren't we? Right, QPR, Kov. Uh, Desmond, Kov to win in the high scorer. Kov, draw, QPR, QPR, draw, Kov, um, draw, goals, 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 QPR, uh, nil, nil, uh, draw, uh, two nil, Kov, Desmond. Let's click through the rest of these. Thank you for all of your predictions. A couple of detailed ones, so I'll I'll read them. Uh, difficult to call. Kov played a sort of style we struggle with. Uh, if we were to get a result, I'd start to believe. You mean you're not believing already? Um, Simon, keep you up there in fourth in the table, looking good. Uh, right there we go, 4,000 hours traveling. Um, yeah, it's been a good stadium, um, the CBS this season, hasn't it? Um, we've had some good fun there. Um, I'm with a couple of the um, a couple of the predictors in there on the it's quite evenly matched, and we think both teams will be on the score sheet. Draw. And here comes the Desmond from me. I'm going to plug it in and we'll see what odds we are getting on the Desmond. is 12 to 1 um, for it to be Coventry 2, QPR 2. Can we get the high scorer with the goals shared? I wonder. Uh, that's my call. Uh, head over to betfair.com if that too is your tipple. Uh, 12 to 1. Long odds on that one. But hey-ho, all the fun of the game. Isn't it? Right. Next up, uh, West Brom versus Peterborough. Uh, this one, apologies, posh fans, might be a bit of an open and shut case, mightn't it? We have a team that's very good at home, undefeated, and barely concedes a goal against a team that is very bad away from home in Peterborough. I think Peterborough, it's 11 losses in 12 or 12 in 13, something like that. It's over 90% loss ratio away from home for the posh, and they're coming up against Big Val and West Brom. Will DK start in this game? He didn't start at QPR. West Brom went under at QPR, and we know the problem with West Brom has been getting on the score sheet, hasn't it? But still, to be undefeated at home by this stage coming up to late January is still impressive for West Brom, despite the fact there is a reasonable argument of um, underachievement there. Only two points in the last four games just exacerbates that. Get your predictions in then, guys. Uh, West Brom draw, posh. West Brom draw or posh for this one. Let me give you your bloom numbers. Um, right, it's, it's heavily West Brom, but I'll do them anyway. Um, Baggies by 17 in the league table, by 20 in XG difference, by nine in the eight-game form table, by 21 in the homes and aways, by 13 for goals four, and by 23... In terms of fewest conceded, this is the best defence against the worst. So, with all of that being said, you may well need your joker if you're calling this one in Posh's favour. But, um, freedom of speech, we accept everybody's predictions and we don't argue with them. Um, well, sometimes we do. What are you going to do, hey? Uh, West Brom draw Posh. Let's get into it here. Um, where am I starting uh, let's start here. 
Um, wow. Well, there you go. After all of that, the first prediction is for Peterborough. There we go. I think people should um, come on um, and own up their worst predictions the next week. But you never know. I always end up having to own up mine, don't I? Well, in fact, all of Twitter reminds me if ever I get anything wrong. So there we go. Uh, right. Let's click through a few of these. Um, a couple of um, posh ones getting through. I think that's just people. Just some contrarian um, behaviour coming in here, maybe. Um, well, there you go. A few of them in there. Um, I think, um, and giggles. Um, but let's click through all of these. Um, right. All of you people, uh, I think you're just trying to be contrarian against what I've said. Everyone who's called posh needs to own up next week if you're wrong, okay? Um, this shahousery just can't catch, can it? Um, I think you know what I'm going with here. Although a, a few poshes in the chat there. I'm going home. I cannot see anything else other than a home win. With the normal caveats, this is the championship and we do get ridiculous results. And, of course, I'll own up if I call it one way. It won't just disappear into the ether. Um, I'm going to go 2-0 posh. Uh, Peterborough, 2-0 <laughs> baggies, excuse me. Uh, baggies 2, posh nil. You're going to get 9-2. to two, So very, very short odds on that one. If you fancy, uh, go over at betfair.com. Please gamble responsibly. And in we go for uh, Reading versus Uddersfield. Get your predictions in. Reading, draw, Uddersfield. Uh, Royals, draw, Terriers. Reading, draw, or Huddersfield in this one. And, um, yeah, there's not a lot positive we can say about Reading at the moment. Um, each week, there's a different strand to the, oh, it's, it's not good there um, at the moment. And... Uh, the latest defeat was the third in a row. That was in midweek against Luton, wasn't it? Um, one point in the last five. The Posh do have two games in hand on Reading, but Reading are still outside the bottom three, defending that points deduction, that minus six. Huddersfield are still fighting up there, just outside the playoffs, 41 points. Um, three draws, two defeats in the last five. Uh, sorry. Three wins, two draws, excuse me. Too many numbers going around my brain um, in the last five games and perpetually proving me wrong Huddersfield this season. So get your predictions in. Um, it is Reading draw or Huddersfield, Reading draw or Huddersfield. Here are your Bloom numbers. Uh, Reading, uh, right, so Huddersfield here, they are the away team, of course, uh, by 14 in the league, by 11 in the XG difference, by 14 in the eight-game form table, by 11 in the homes and aways. Um, in terms of um, scoring, Huddersfield are actually in the top six in the in the league for goals scored as well, uh, by seven in that one and by 12. So it's a clean sweep for Huddersfield on all the numbers I use as potential projections. Um, let's have a look and see what you guys are saying. I think we need to start saying, if, we're, if you're back in a big outsider, you've got to give me a reason now because we're seeing some... Um, some strangeness uh, going on here. Uh, right, Huddersfield, 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 draw. Reading with the Joker. Um, Huddersfield, nil, nil. Huddersfield, 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 Huddersfield. Uh, draw, Huddersfield, Huddersfield. Uh, Katie, draw. Uh, Huddersfield, 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 draw. Terriers, draw. Uh, let's click through as many of these as we can. All three from Sorber Set Pieces, yeah. Uh, Huddersfield, very good on the um, set plays. Um, there you go. So you lot are pretty much with the numbers, as am I on this one. Things are bad at Reading and it's hard to predict. We're, we're more predicting against Reading than for Huddersfield, I think, here. But away, um, I think, and someone mentioned the set plays. I think I'll dive in on that assumption as well. I'm going to go for a 2-1. I always back. I always think that Reading can get on the score sheets with um, the likes of Swift, Hoyler, Carroll, etc. are fit and still at the club. Um, but I'm going to go for a Huddersfield win. It's not quite um, a 10 to 1 shot, is it? But 17 to 2, you will get a betfair.com on a 2 1 win for Huddersfield. Um, please gamble responsibly. As we move on, he says, trying to write without his pen um, down. There we go. As we move on to the Brian Clough Derby, it is Nottingham Forest versus Derby County. 
Um, please forget the subplot off the pitch. We can talk about that in the Q&A at the end. Um, let's just talk about the game and the 90 minutes on the pitch and how that is going to go. Derby are obviously in absolutely rip-roaring form, aren't they? Uh, 13 points in five is excellent. Um, Stevie Cooper and Forrest had um, back-to-back defeats, but they picked up that last-minute win at Millwall. Don't let it deceive you that it was in the last minute, though. They were pushing and pushing and pushing in that game and um, accrued a very, very high XG. Now, we all know about these games. They're very tense. They're always on telly. They're very well attended. They're very largely policed. And they tend to be low scoring and often draws. The last four of these have been a 1-1 draw. Seven out of the last 10 have been um, draws as well. And I don't, th- I think you're looking at nine games back for a um, for a derby win. So it's been um, very, very much Forest's territory, the Brian Clough derby in recent times. Uh, get your predictions in. Forest draw, derby. Forest draw or derby. Let me do the Bloom numbers for you. Uh, Forest in the league by 13. But remember... Some people reasonably say to me, Ben, do the real league table, not the, uh, in which case I think um, you would have, well, where do you have Derby in the real league table? 35 uh, goal differences in theory, so they would be below Luton. Uh, so they'd be 12th. So it'd only be Forest by two in the real league table. Um, with that points deduction, obviously, we're talking about. Um, where am I? My XG difference is uh, Forest by 10. Eight game form table, fourth versus fifth. Um, that is Forest by one, um, which is uh, quite something. I might, might have to double check that because Derby's eight game form is really good. Forest must have had wins back past those um, five games. Uh, homes and aways is Forest by four. Goals four, Forest by 14. Remember, Forest are high scorers, but Derby don't concede many. They've got the fourth best defence in the league, and goals conceded is actually Derby by three. And we should say, as if we haven't stated it enough since the last week, Derby are off the bottom, which is um, probably uh, worth acknowledging, um, given a 21-point deduction to even get close to being off the bottom, especially by um, pre-February is um, impressive stuff, uh, none the less. Right, predictions, Forest draw, Derby, Forest draw, Derby. And here we go into the chat. Uh, where am I landing for a starter? On this one, draw, draw, Forest. Uh, Derby have lost Jagielka and Shinny. Well, yeah, jagiel has gone to Stoke, hasn't he? Um, Shinny, I think, will be a good player, but I think it'll be less of a loss than Jagielka because they've got those youngsters that can come in the midfield, whereas Jagielka and Davis were looking good. But, hey, you don't want to be losing it, do you? Um, <laughs> match abandoned. Well, there you go. Uh, draw, draw, Forest. Um, Derby, uh, draw, High scoring draw. I'd like to see it. Never is in this game, is it? Uh, for one reason or another. I remember doing the season, I saw both of them. I think it was Karanka and Lampard, and they were both nil nil uh, that particular season. Not fun. Um, Forest, uh, draw, draw, home. Let's keep snapping through um, these. There we go. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, sorry, let me read that detailed one. Um, there, uh, one one most under 2.5. That sounds yeah, I agree with that one. Um, Baz, uh, very, very much so. Um, there you go. My numbers were right, says Kenny in the chat. Good, you always wonder if you just scribbled one down well. Um, guys, how can I not do what I'm about to do when the last four games have all been 1 1? How can I not do it? I'll kick myself if it is 1 1 and I haven't called 1 1. So I'm sorry, guys. You're going to call me predictable and boring. Draw! <laughs> I'm going for 1-1. One, one. It's got to be done. I'm sorry. And that's almost me betting it to not be 1-1 one, because one, I'm always wrong in the predictions, aren't I? Um, just to break the break the streak of monotony, hey? But look, uh, betfair.com, 5-1. to one. So we're in short on that one. 5-1, to one, Forest 1, Derby 1. Um, over on betfair.com. If you fancy that, please gamble responsibly. Right. I'm going to be interested in your calls on this one, which is Sheffield United versus Luton, which um, 
shouldn't be evenly matched when you think one team's a year one parachute team and one team's come up through the leagues. Um, but we do have Luton above Sheffield United in the table and we do have Luton in better form than Sheffield United. There's a bit of a sense that Luton are mid-streak and Sheffield United are just coming off the end of a streak, aren't they, with one point in their last two. Um, Luton back-to-back -back wins, um, as we were saying, uh, uh, for forgot earlier in the show about that brilliant uh, Luton win over Bournemouth and they won at Reading in the week. Sheffield United will be smarting, won't they, from being two up against Preston, who had a man sent off and not winning the game. So, look, if they react to that, it you know it could be a chance for them to really um, bounce back. But um, yeah, Luton are made of quite stern stuff, aren't they? Um, what I will say is um, a couple of those wins were at home. In fact, some good results there. Actually, no, I'm not going to say that because there's two away wins into the bargain as well. So Luton pretty much equaling out homes and aways at the moment. Get your predictions in. Blades draw Hatters. Blades draw Hatters. Luton draw. Sheffield United. Which way around do you see it going? Here are your Bloom numbers. Luton in the lead by one. Um, Luton XG by three. Uh, Blades form by four. Luton homes and aways by two. Luton goals by five. Uh, goals four. Luton goals conceded by five as well. So despite the fact we... It's, it's hard backing against Sheffield United this season because you know if they win, you'll you feel silly because of the squad they've got. But a lot of those numbers are very pro Luton, um, is all I would say there. Well, it's never all I would say. I always say more, but there you go. Let's go into some predictions uh, there. Where are we going to dive in here? We'll start with Colm. Uh, Blades, Luton, Luton. Um, that's an orange, a tangerine. Hmm. Um, went to Blackpool yet? <laughs> uh, Blades, Luton, Luton, uh, draw. Uh, Blades uh, would take a point, but I have a bad feeling, uh, says has two on Blades. Uh, Luton, uh, we're fairly mixed on this. Uh, Jay, Sheffield United win. We've won two games on the bounce. Uh, Sheffield, United under, Sheffield United have been underperforming all season, really. It should be in the top 10 with that squad. But no divine right, is there, hey? Um, let's click through all of these. Uh, Luton are on it at the moment, 2-0 uh, draw. I take a point. Yeah, I, I think Luton fans are sensibly hedging um, their bets, aren't they? Um, I think we're going to come back down to earth, says Steve. Um, Reading were, were very bad. Um, there we go. Right, thank you, everybody. Sorry if I didn't get to read them all out. I'll try and click them all on the screen. Um, do you know what? It's not even a joker. I'm going to go for Luton. Away. Um, and, of course, by all rights with the squads, um, Sheffield United should be um, able to beat lots of teams in the championship. But they haven't, have they? And Luton are just in good nick at the moment. And Luton have got that kind of thing about them where if you're not on your game, they will they'll take great delight in mugging you off, won't they, Luton? So I'm, I'm, going, to go for, I'm going to go for a Luton win. Remember, we've seen... I think we've seen Huddersfield and Blackpool win at Sheffield United this season, albeit earlier in the season under Yukanovic. I'm going to go for a 2-1, um, which is long odds. OK, so it's, it's nearly a joke about Luton, obviously, above Blades in the table. Uh, you're going to get 13-1. to 1. So that has gone out since this morning when I did my research. Um, so it looks like the, the money's on Sheffield United in the game, but I'm doing the opposite and going for Luton. Right, we've got four to go, and then we'll do some Q and A. Next up is Blackpool versus Millwall. Blackpool versus Millwall. Get your... She doesn't have an answer. She never has an answer. Interrupts me and doesn't have an answer for Blackpool and Millwall. Alexa, who will win out of Blackpool and Millwall? Here's something I found on the web. According to Spatian.com, Blackpool also got off to a winning start. <laughs> Go away. Alexa, off. Sorry. Um, get your predictions in. She's no help, is she? Um, Blackpool draw or Millwall. Blackpool draw or Millwall. Um, neither of these sides are in great nick, really, are they? Millwall have lost three in four. And there's a cup defeat to Palace that we did as a watch-along as well, wasn't there? 
Um, Blackpool. Yeah. Okay, they won the last game, didn't they, against Hull? Um, but I think someone told me Blackpool at the moment are only beating their um, former League One compatriots and they're losing the other games. And that run stretches back a fair bit. So we're not seeing the excellent consistency that we saw from Blackpool earlier in the season. Get your predictions in. Blackpool draw Millwall. Blackpool draw or Millwall. Let me give you your Bloom numbers. Uh, Millwall by two in the table, by three on the XG, by three on the eight-game form table, by nine on the homes and aways. It's a tie for goals scored. And it's Millwall also by eight in the goals conceded stakes. So actually, all the metrics I use point towards Millwall, but Blackpool are playing at home. And um, they're not the worst home side in the world at all. They've got as many wins as they have defeats um, there. So I don't know whether that evens things out. Let's have a look and see what you say. <laughs> I can't say her name, but apparently she's got more answers than Lee Bowyer. There we go. Oh, did I did I manage to start other people's? My apologies. I shouldn't do that, should I, when we're on the um when we're on the um like the live stream. Yes, and you should like the stream as well. Um indeed, says Colm. He's gone 2 0 mil. Uh David's gone uh draw. Um Ross is gonna be there. No hard feelings. Hope we bring back the three pointers. Right, let's get into this. So Blackpool Mill. Uh, Blackpool, draw, uh, mill, pull, 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 pull. Interesting, pull, um, draw, uh, pull, mill. We always give you one. That's a bit of a half heart. I didn't want to shout in because it comes really loud in my ears. But there we go. Draw, 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 draw. Um, yeah, there you go. Let's uh, click on all of those. And guys, I think you know, um, I think you know what's coming from me. Uh, two sides not in great form, um, not massively high up in the scoring stakes. I think we need to see Sean Dyche and Neil Warnock, don't we, everybody? Don't we? Draw! It's always good to see Warney and um, Dyche, isn't it? But I'm going to play the nil-nil. Sorry, Millwall fans. I always seem to play the nil-nil on. Millwall. Blame Gary Rower, hey. Um, seven to one over on betfair.com for a Blackpool Millwall nil all. Okay. Um, please gamble responsibly. And of course, uh, nil nil is a horrible thing to bet on because someone can score after 30 seconds and your afternoon is afternoon is over. It's not it's not got the best longevity, but we gotta throw one in just so we can see these two beautiful smiling faces every stream. Right, three to go, guys, and it is another local derby for us to talk about, and I believe they call it the seven-side derby. People get very finicky about derby definitions, but hey, we're talking about football. People get very pedantic and finicky over everything to do with football, don't I know it, hey? Uh, but it's the seven-side derby between Bristol City and Cardiff. Get your predictions in. Um, Bristol City, draw Cardiff. Uh, Robins draw Bluebirds City draw City that won't help me don't don't put City um, so yeah I'm still struggling with uh, Bristol City who have loaned Tyreek Backinson to Ipswich today so more reason for Bristol City fans to talk to Ipswich fans because that's gone really well um, this season hasn't it uh, three defeats in four for Bristol City um, they're unpredictable aren't they uh, to say the least eight wins um, and twelve defeats. This season um, got that three-two against Mill, didn't they? With the Vyman hat trick, and okay, they lost to Fulham. Whoop de do! Everyone's losing to Fulham at the moment, aren't they? Cardiff are more predictable, and not in a good way uh, because they're they're not winning under Steve Morrison, are they? Although they've been busy, haven't they? Um, Man City lad Doyle has gone in. Youngster's gone in on loan. We'll do a transfer update, maybe on Saturday morning, actually, um, and get up to date on all the players that have come in. Um, so I'm almost imploring you to go with hunches here because um, there's not much of a trail on either team, really, or tangible one. Um, maybe the Bristol City home form plays into it. I don't know. Let me give you the blue numbers to see if they help in any way. I'm not sure they're going to. Um, going to. That was very Suffolk, wasn't it? I'm not sure they're going to. Um, for those who want me to speak proper. <laughs> uh, right, in the league, Bristol City by four. In the XG, Cardiff by four. 
In the form, Bristol City by three. Homes and aways, Cardiff by one. Goals scored, Bristol City by 10. Goals conceded, Cardiff by one. It's all over the place. It's all over the place. Um, say what you want on this one, I think. Let's go into the chat. Bristol City draw or Cardiff. Let's have a look. Um, where are we? You've come to steal my thunder. Yeah, JC was preempting all of my predictions last time. Let's see how he gets on. Let's see how he gets on um, today. Right. Uh, Bristol City, Bristol City. Uh, draw, draw. Cardiff, Cardiff. There you go. Um, two of each to start with. Uh, Robbins, Robbins. Draw, draw, draw. Yeah, I can see the logic in a in a draw, I have to say. Um, draw, draw. Um, Bristol City. Um, don't blame you on the nil. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, Bristol City, Cardiff. Draw, draw. Uh, most likely goals. Yeah, the defences aren't good. And Bristol City have actually got quite a good goal scoring um, record, haven't they? Look at that grey hair. You see that? I'm going to pull that out after this. Shocking. I blame the lights. Um, not the march of uh, Mother Nature. 2-1 um, Bristol City. Draw. Um, let's click through all of these. Thank you. So if you don't get it read out, I'll try and put it all on the screen. Um, apologies for having any connectivity issues. Um, don't feel the need to mention it in the chat. It won't do any good. Um, right. So I've gone small screen before. I've actually bellowed out my prediction, which I do like to do. And I need to bellow out one word beginning with H with four letters. Home. I don't know why. I just have a hunch on Bristol City on this one. And I can't give... I know that's rubbish analysis, but I just do. They won the first game, didn't they? I think, uh, I think they've just got a little bit more attacking quality, haven't they? So um, I'm going to ramp it up. Why the hell not? Let's go for four goals in this one. So it's a long shot, a very long shot. Look at that, 18 to 1. If you fancy that, and I'm I'm not tipping it, I'm just telling you what it is, by the way. 18 to 1 over on uh, betfair.com for a home win to Bristol City 3-1 in the seventh side derby. Two to go and another Welsh team to talk about. And of course, if we've already mentioned Cardiff, that must be Swansea. Uh, so get your calls in. Uh, Swansea v Preston. Swansea draw Preston. Swansea draw Preston. Swansea are slippery at the moment, aren't they? Uh, three defeats. Uh, draw in the last game, which is a creditable draw because it was way at Huddersfield. And I'm sure we've all been mugged off by Huddersfield this season, haven't we? Especially us playing um, predictions. Uh, but Swansea weren't mugged off by Huddersfield. They got themselves a point. Flynn Downs. Um, former Ipswich man with the equaliser. Preston, no, you would have to say we're impressive um, in getting it back to 2-2, weren't they, against Sheffield United? That shows some really good fight. Ryan Lowe still undefeated and Pat Bauer, the captain, has signed a new contract as well. So I don't know. It feels like the mood is a little bit better at Preston than at Swansea, Pat. Not necessarily the mood, but, the you know, the, the form, the the direction of travel. You know what I'm saying, don't you? Um uh, a new signing in that I need to um, look up. Um, wolf, I believe, um, of, of some description, some kind of wolf, um, is in. Um, and Swansea fans have been excited talking to me about that one as well. So uh, some moves in the transfer market as well going on. Get your predictions in. Swansea draw Preston. Swansea draw Preston. Here are your bloom numbers. Uh, Swans, Preston then. So Preston by three in the league table, uh, by five in the XG, by ten in the eight-game form table. Um, Swans by two in the homes and aways. Preston by one in goals scored and a complete tie in terms of um, goals conceded. So it's tight, verging on Preston in terms of my numbers, if that means anything, anything to you. Um, Swans draw Preston. Let's get some forecasts in the chat here. Wolf. Ain't nothing but a hound dog. We hope so. Um, hey, if he's anything like Pirro, who's been a, a very, very decent signing, uh, hasn't he? Uh, where are we going to land on this one? There you go, David. Um, right, Preston first. Yeah, can't escape father time. No, he's coming for me, isn't he? Eh? Uh, Preston, Preston, Preston. Uh, Preston, Swans, uh, draw. Preston, Swans, Swans, Preston, a nil-nil coming out. A few more Swans there, three more Swans. 
the Ryan Lowe unbeaten run to continue there. Um, Swans Wolf off the bench. We're going to hear about the Wolf, aren't we? Uh, I think Swansea much further along with the Manning product than Preston. Yeah, I agree with that. But maybe they're still getting the bounce, um, Steve. That everyone loves to talk about. Uh, a draw. Um, can't make the live show. Just jump to say hello. Hello to you, David. You're most welcome. Uh, let's click on all of these. I uh, would say the mood is uh, better. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, really positive at North End. Yeah. Uh, it's it, it's fine finding the right word, isn't it, Will? I know there's been a good, good mood at Swansea, you know, in terms of what they're doing. But at the moment, it does feel like just that momentum if, if it exists. Um, uh, 2 1 Preston. Uh, Swans are very slippery at the moment. Uh, Hannes Wolf. Yeah, you love it. Looking forward to seeing him play. A few more here. Uh, one for Preston, one for Swans. Swans. Uh, Preston, no Q. Yeah, good point, Dan. Hughes is going to be suspended, um, isn't he? Draw and Preston there. Um, I'm going to go. I wouldn't normally do this. Away. I, I think Preston, I don't know. I think there's something there at the moment. And Swans had a good little peak, didn't they? And now it feels like Russ Martin's into team building stage two. So I think there'll be a trough and then another peak. But I think it'll probably come later on through maybe February, maybe in February, March um, sort of time. So I'm going to go for Preston. And I'm just going to go for them to be able to shut Swansea out. So I'm going to go for a one niller. Uh, to Preston, which is eight to one over at betfair.com. Um, that's actually um, come in. So it looks like there is smart money on uh, smart money, money um, going in around that sort of market, uh, judging by where that market has moved. So I don't know if that tells you anything. Um, or am, am I just trying to argue that people are agreeing with me? Hey, um, that's a fool's errand, isn't it? Uh, but Preston to win that one. Um, and what was it? Eight to one, one nil over at betfair.com. Finally, finally, um, it's Birmingham versus Barnsley. Get your predictions in. Birmingham draw Barnsley. Birmingham draw Barnsley. Uh, Birmingham fans probably won't thank me for reminding them. I remember this being a playoff semi final the year Ipswich won the playoffs. And uh, yeah, Barnsley, very strange get. Barnsley won 4 nil and they. Um, one of the few playoff games that was all done by the end of the first leg, really. But there you go. Uh, get predictions in then for Birmingham versus Barnsley. Barnsley didn't play last time out. It was the back end of um, COVID issues. Who were they due to play? Was it Stoke, I, I think. Um, so they've had a little bit of a rest. Will that help them or not? I don't know. The mood is not great uh, with Birmingham. And they lost 6-2 to Fulham, but I'm going to say it again. whoop de doo uh, Fulham have smashed everybody they've played in the last week. So hopefully um, Lee Bowyer can write that off as some kind of outlier. And the, the, the big issue really in this game is how just how bad Barnsley are and the, there's there's no real trend up all season, is there? Since Big Val left, it's it's just been bad. Well, look, apart from maybe two games at the start, I think they got four points from the first two, but there's been no uplift from Poya Espargi for all you new manager bouncers at all. It's it's almost like um, you know, things write themselves out in the end, isn't it? So um you would make Birmingham favourites and they are playing at home as well. I don't know what in the way of protests are going to happen. I believe, and Ian Danta talked about this in the interview we did on Monday, the talk sport journalist, I believe the big protests are going to be in February. Uh, but you just don't know whether, um, if any protests happen, what, how that disrupts things in terms of the um, uh, BS, what is it, Birmingham Sports Holding, BSHLT out uh, camp. I can't remember the right order of the... Um, of the protest hashtag. Um, so let me give you the numbers because, and I mean, I'll be quite frank, they will push you in Birmingham's direction. Um, so league position, uh, Birmingham by six, XG Birmingham by 13, form Birmingham by three. I have to say the eight game form table, it's 21st versus 24th. It's not big and it's not clever. Um, homes and away is Birmingham by six, goal scored Birmingham by five. Um, Goals conceded. Let's give one to Barnsley. Uh, it's Barnsley by one in terms of goals conceded. And, of course, Birmingham shipping six in the um, week didn't really help that cause, did it? 
Um, let's get into the predictions then, and then we do some Q and A to round out the show. Birmingham draw Barnsley. Birmingham draw or Barnsley. Um, oh, thanks, James. So the protest is outside. So okay, I stand corrected on that one. It's not going to affect the players. And it's quite smart from the Birmingham fans actually keep it outside and have it organised for the um, for the Sheffield United game. Um, uh, and by the way, I'm not taking any side in that. That's the Birmingham fans expressing their freedom of speech, which fortunately in this country we are um, still hopefully allowed to do. Uh, right, where are we? Um, okay, Barnsley Joker, I'm going so we'll definitely. It's optimism for you, James. Enjoy the game, though. Do check in on the Super Stream. Um, Birmingham 3, Barnsley nil. Stop calling it a Joker, hey? Um, right, where where are we? Uh, right, Birmingham, 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 draw, draw, uh, Birmingham, uh, 3 1 Barnsley, and a novel of bow your excuses there. Blues, uh, a few Barnsleys in there, interesting. Uh, let me click through all of these. Sorry, um, and Barnsley are shocking. Yeah, they're gonna post a very low total, aren't they? 14 points as things stand. I think people have just been left with their joker and their nil-nil, so they're just throwing it in um, there. Uh, JC, important next three games for us. Uh, Sean as well, going for Birmingham. Guys, I'm going to do the same. Until I see tangible evidence of a Barnsley uplift, um, there's no point really me predicting it, is it? Um, so I'm going to go for Birmingham. Home! Um, and I think it's a shutout as well. So I'm going to go 2-0 to a Blues in this one. And you will not get that long a price. 13-2 uh, to two, uh, is your price for a 2-0 win to Birmingham. Right. That is our predictions done. Thank you for your input. Let's do some Q&A now. So if you've got any questions um, about anything at all, championship, Football generally, anything at all. We'll do some Q&A real quick now to end out the stream. Uh, please do check out um, football365.com. Great piece by Ian King on there as well about Bristol City and um, money and whatnot. Good good write-up that by Ian. There's Nathan Spafford's stuff. There's Ben HD's stuff along with my stuff. You are going to get the big weekend and the stat pack over there. Football365, sorry, I'm pointing the wrong way. Dot com And do check out Betfair, betfair.com. There are partners here. We do encourage you to gamble responsibly, only bet what you can afford. But um, if you want to liven up the super stream and you can afford to do so, uh, do get involved over at betfair.com on any of those prices we have given you. Right. Let's get everything locked in. Get any questions in in the comments and we will get answers to you. So this week I am back in Bristol City, Fulham, West Brom. Birmingham, Preston, Bournemouth, Luton, Huddersfield and Borough. And I'm going for the draw in the Brian Clough Derby. I'm going for a draw in Blackpool, Millwall. And I'm going for a draw in Coventry versus QPR. Um, a £1 bet would return £62,000 if that all comes in. Nice work if you can get it. I'm going to hit submit. I'm going to hit confirm. And my predictions are now locked in. You do the same. Sign up with your email over at football365.com. Right. Uh, let me write down the time code and we will get into some q and I can see loads of comments in there. I'm hoping there's plenty of questions. I suspect a couple of clubs and a certain off-pitch issue is going to get um, mentioned a lot. Uh, but we will get into it. And you set the agenda. Um, I will answer the questions. Where shall we start? start. Uh, Steve, thoughts on Backinson? Um, honestly, I know um, I've, uh, let me leave, leave that on the screen. I know I've made fun of the discourse between Bristol City fans and Ipswich fans. And look, it has been a bit rubbish um, this season and a bit juvenile at, at times. But um, I found the Bristol City fans pretty cool today. They've given some honest views about Backinson. You know, good player, talented guy, attitude, not quite right level of performance not quite right so maybe he just needs to go away from the championship and um the way everyone wins from this type of um deal is that uh backinson improves um bristol city either get a better player back or can sell an improved player and ipswich gets some output on the pitch if he can 
work his way into the team. So, um, yeah, good luck to him. I've, I've liked bits and bobs of what I've seen, but I do respect the view I've had from my Bristol City friends that, you know, flattered to deceive and, and whatnot. That's not an unreasonable uh, comment in my view. Uh, Ryan, outside chance of going down, staying up. Um, outside chance, uh, outside chance of staying up is Peterborough, if they can sort out their um, away form. Outside chance of going down, obviously we're looking at Reading, aren't we? Um, whether that's an outside chance or not is a, is a different matter entirely. Um, thoughts on Fulham likely having another game in hand with the Blackpool game next round postponed. Um, they'll be fine, TJ, won't they? They've got good momentum. Obviously, it holds it a little bit, but Fulham have got a great squad. Um, they've got good momentum. They've got a clear philosophy on what they're doing. So, look, if games bunch up, I can't think of um, anyone really better placed uh, than Fulham to be able to cope it. Um, how am I below you? Well, that's a humble brag, isn't it, Hamza, if ever I heard one? Because I'm rubbish, apparently, aren't I? Uh, thoughts on Liam Moore and Cabral issues at Reading. Um, all I will say, uh, Cameron, on I'll talk about Liam Moore. The um, Raphael one seems to be a lot better. But, yeah, the Liam Moore one, and I'm not going to take a side, either the clubs or Liam Moore's, I just don't want it. I don't want a club statement and a corner flag. And apparently Liam Moore didn't know about that. And then Liam Moore, whatever the deal is, Liam Moore doesn't have much right to complain if he's then going to post his response on Instagram. And, you know, you just want someone at some point to say, I'm going to be the bigger person. Look at Chris Wilder and um, uh, Prince Mohammed. Whether Chris Wilder is right or wrong, whether he was badly behaved or well behaved, he kept quiet and he kept his counsel. And that kept stopped the dirty laundry being aired in public. And I prefer to prefer to see that. But yeah, I suspect uh, Liam Moore and Reading might be done. Uh, Baz, hopefully Rooney stays and finishes the job at Derby. Do you think uh, he would overlook the mess at Everton to go there? Uh, yeah, we've had this comparison a lot with Rooney and um, Everton and Lampard and Chelsea. I th no, I think if he was offered it, I think he'd take it. I don't think he'll get offered it, actually. It looks like they, they want to go in a slightly different direction. It's it's difficult for us mere mortals to put ourselves in the shoes of these incredibly high-energy, um, successful elite sportsmen. And they they back themselves when they get the chance, don't they? So and I think that was the thing with, with Lampard. He's so driven. He's never going to turn down a big job like that because he believes he can achieve anything. And I think Rooney, Rooney's going to cut from the same same cloth. But it looks, well, speaking of Lampard, it looks like he's linked there, isn't he? Um, some other ones, wouldn't they? Um, Orbital, what do you think of Derby County's near? <laughs> well, let's hope that doesn't um, have to happen and we can move on from that. Uh, should Blackburn have had a penalty and should Hull say, um, honestly, Damien, I'm going to sound like Arsene Wenger. I haven't seen it. Um, I had to start my shift at 7am today, work till three, then did something for another YouTube channel, then did baby stuff and dog stuff and then ate my dinner, then had a bath and then did this. So I haven't seen it and um, I'm looking forward to sitting with the missus after this. So um, sorry, Damien, I'm going to plead the fifth. Um, I'll go with, look clear cut to me. So I'll, um, I know Damien talks a lot of sense. So I'll go with his take on it. Uh, Lewis, always good on um, Derby. Uh, do you think if Derby go under, it would be the end of the EFL, as they would have shown to be um, inept? Well, it won't be the end of the EFL because they're in charge, frankly, but it would be a big stain on the um, on the EFL's watch. Now, whatever you think the of the rights and wrongs of whoever, and, you know, OK, Mel Morris, fine, completely open to criticism. We, we get it. EFL, completely open to criticism. Some of the things that are going on in the public arena as it pertains to Middlesbrough and Wickham, we can criticise all of that. But if we take away the point scoring and the who's at fault, if I'm running a football, um, what would you call it, a football pyramid, and one of the clubs goes bust or goes into liquidation or whatever, I, I don't look very good, do I? So I think it would be a big stain on the EFL if it, if it did happen. Um, and yeah, look, I'm sure we'll get more. I'm sure we'll get more questions on it. So, uh, Jake, um, Ben, as an analytical data driven fellow, does the championship's defiance of logic frustrate you at times? All part of the charm. Um, both, Jake, obviously. Look, 
if I were able, and he says I'm data driven, look, I come to every prediction show with that, which beggars belief how I'm so bad at predictions. But um, maybe I should stop going with the logic and um, do some of your guys' um, jiggery pokery. But no, it doesn't frustrate me. I like it. Um, obviously, in the past five years, and we've mentioned it a lot, Jake. It's become less unpredictable, hasn't it, in terms of, you know, we're talking about the parachute payment shrinking and the dominance of the parachute teams at the top of the table. But, um, yeah, and the, the, the thing with data, Jake, is the better the football, the more the data is viable, isn't it? And so when we get elite Champions League teams, the players are so good, they're so consistent, the data is then so consistent, you can rely on it more. Whereas, and we love the championship, but we'd all admit the players are second tier players. Um, some of them are going to play here forever. Some of them are going to go to the Premier League and some of them are coming down from the Premier League. So the, the data is less reliable when the players are less reliable. And that's with every respect to these players who we all admire, don't we? But um, I think that's what throws the logic out of the window, doesn't it? Um, how many draws have there been in a single championship match day? Um, I can see a fair few this time, but my predictions are rubbish. I don't know. Um, someone, uh, someone will be able to give us a a, a record there. Um, I did the numbers actually. I think it worked out at something really predictable. Something like there's four home wins and well, it's like five four five four three would add up, wouldn't it? An average game week is basically like five home wins, four away wins, and three draws. I think um, I, I did the maths on last season, but it is reasonably predictable in um, respects to that stuff. Uh, will Fulham score more than the next two teams in the league combined? No. No, I don't think they will. I think uh, second and third place will probably have 60 to 70 minimum. Probably one of them will have more. So, no. But their total is um, hugely, hugely impressive, obviously. Um, Lenny, looks like we may be sticking with McCann as... Um, is it... Forgive me, this is the first time I'm going to put... Is it Il Charlie if he's Turkish? Is there a church or is it Il Kali? I don't know. You know my thoughts on pronunciations. Um, um, sanctioned the sign of Reagan Slater, who McCann has wanted. Right decision to stick. Um, Lenny, I would, I would... I'll give you my opinion, but I'd be the first to admit you know way more about Hull than I do. Um, I think so. And I think it's the normal protocol that even if they're totally... Ad- I mean, look at Paul Cook and Ipswich, where... He was just in there before the new owners. They give the guy a chance to hang himself, basically, is the normal protocol with new owners. I know that sounds ruthless, but that's what happens. I, I think McCann with the promotion deserves that chance. But of course, um, as a believer in freedom of speech and freedom of choice, if you buy a football club, you can do what the hell you want with it as long as you're not um, in, you know, in danger in it. So you can change the manager if you want, but I think it's the right thing um, to do. Uh, will the call for help from the government with the EFL, um, uh, will it help? Um, probably not. No, Dave, frustratingly, because uh, it's just legal legal waters, isn't it? And the government will turn around and say, well, what, you know, what, what can we do about that? They can't agree with them and they can't agree with them. That's causing the holdup, which means they can't do that. So they're saying that. And what do you want us to do? Do you know what I mean? Unless they can, you know put some kind of block on something. But no, I don't think they'll be able to help. I think um, it all, it's almost like children, isn't it? Sitting around a table and bash their heads together and getting to say sorry to each other. And um, you're not coming out until you've apologised, um, basically. Um, I'm not advocating bashing children's heads together, but you you, you know what I mean, the euf- euphemism there. Uh, would the potential for eight London teams in the Premier League be bad for football? Probably. Yeah, probably. It, it feels like, um, you know, it'd be good for the London clubs with all the derbies. But... Um, look, I agree in, in meritocracy rather than diversity for the sake of diversity, but diversity can be fun, can't it? If you've got, say, one of Sunderland, Middlesbrough or Newcastle, um, the North West guys, the Manchester guys, the Merseyside guys, um, some Yorkshire, some Midlands, some South, you know, it'd be great to have a, a Welsh team or a South West team in there, which we don't have. Obviously, I'd quite like an East Anglian team. Uh, well, there is an East Anglian team in there. I'd like an East Anglian team wearing blue in there. Maybe two East Anglian teams would be nice. But yeah, um, all too concentrated in one area um, is a bit boring for neutrals, isn't it? But hey, it's a meritocracy and those who get up there um, get up there, don't they? 
Uh, just thought I'd mention QPR's trip to Barnsley has been moved back from 3 p.m. and allows, allows fans to get home. Yeah, it does allow common sense to prevail. Simon, if I can be total devil's advocate, um, the clubs do, there was going to be on TV, wasn't it? Is that right? Um, so they do lose the TV money, obviously, but um, there you go. Uh, do I think Fulham could score double figures in a match before the end of the season? No. No, I don't think they'll score double figures. I think they're going to score triple figures in the goals for column, but um, but no, I don't. I think they would stop at the unwritten rule of five goals, wouldn't they? Um, Hamza, do you see DK getting the goals? We need to at least start challenging. Yes, I do, actually. Yeah. I Unless I've read the player wrong, um, I think he's good enough. And I think he knows Val well enough. And I think the system's perfect for him. So everything in my head says he will score. Whether he gets nine in 15 or 18 or whatever he got in... Uh, for Barnsley, and I, I don't know, but I think he'll he'll do more than uh, John Hugel did, um, which isn't hard at the moment. Um, Jay, why do you think the EFL won't adjudicate on whether Burroughs and Wickham's claim against Derby are football creditors or not? This seems to be contrary to current UK law. Um, look, Jay, I'm not that smart on the law stuff. Would you believe my sister is a solicitor as well? Um, why do you think the EFL won't adjudicate on whether and Burham Wicker's claim against Derby are football creditors or not? Um, it's look, my understanding would be the validity of the claim um, in the first place. And that's not me saying it's right or wrong, by the way, before the whole chat jumps on me, either, either side agreeing with me or disagreeing with me. Um, I think it's the precedent, isn't it? Because as soon as you make. Um, them a football creditor for essentially and it is on pitch league table stuff you are just opening the doors to a world of pain aren't you bear in mind um Bournemouth won the championship in 1415 and were found guilty of FFP so what what then happens then surely every side that finished under Bournemouth is now a uh, a football creditor and able to sue in terms of, do you know what I mean? Things will start to get unraveled very quickly for anyone who can afford to um, go legal on anybody else. And it's all a little bit scary. Um, Damien, would you say it's worth having a punt on England win the World Cup? Of course, absolutely. And I'm not leaving my bias. You know, the England coverage, the bias at the door, rubbish goes out the window, doesn't it? Hey, it's not rubbish, bias at the door, by the way. Um, do Luton have a realistic chance of making the playoffs, Ryan? Well, yeah. Um, I think I think it'll be a year or two too early for them, but they do have a chance. Of course, they have a chance. It's the championship, isn't it? Honestly, this sounds ridiculous to say, but if I were a Luton fan, I wouldn't be too uncomfortable with um, with just being in the top ten. I think and. Keeping that build going because generally in football, the pattern is something that rises very, very quickly normally falls very quickly afterwards in football. Something that rises incrementally, I think, has more of a chance. And the thing with someone um, like Luton, don't clip that out, please. Um, someone like Luton in terms of a well-run club um, working their way up. They can almost just sit there and keep doing what they're doing whilst all the chaos plays out around them in terms of the FFP team. So, um, yeah, but of course, I'm sure Luton would take being in the playoffs right now, wouldn't they? Uh, for goodness sakes. Um, uh, what else have we got in the chat for questions? Um, I think we are all good there. And we've gone past the hour, hour and 10. Goodness me, right. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go and watch Superstore Season 6 with um, Shaley, which I'm very much enjoying at the moment. So, look, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, thank you for your predictions. Before you go, I haven't plugged this once, please hit the like button and please hit subscribe if you haven't already. The plan is, over the weekend, and it's just a plan, um, we should be able to do some kind of feature video tomorrow, hopefully around lunchtime. I hope they'll try and get that out for you. Um, we should be able to do Watford versus Norwich as well um, tomorrow. And 
I reckon we could do an elongated Saturday Super Stream and cover the second half maybe of um, Derby and Forest as well. Leave that with me. We'll definitely be Dearly Departed on Sunday and the review show on Sunday night. So plenty, plenty going on. If you want to shout out, I'll click it up in the advert afterwards. Thank you, everybody, for watching. It's a lovely big over and out from me. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go and watch another video.